Thanks very much, Lorraine. Could I begin by saying that this wonderful exhibition is here on my father's traditional land and I'm very honoured, very humbled to be here. But I would like to pay my respects to all ancestors, elders and communities of this great nation and indeed our neighbouring islands. Can I pay my respects first and foremost to the two wonderful young women, to Lorraine and Genevieve, to your families. I can't imagine how proud they would be of you and are of you because I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I just think it's such a, you know, it's such a wonderful sight to see that we have, and very fittingly, Lorraine, can I say the title of this exhibition being The Next Generation is absolutely what our culture's about, and to see this living legacy, yeah, I'm, I'm just so proud of you, so thank you. And of course to Nova, yeah, I want to pay my respects to you and, and to your family. Thank you for being here, it's always great to be in your company. Genevieve has flown all the way down here by herself and you know I think that speaks doesn't it you know a young woman all the way from home is it's a big journey and for such an important exhibition and sure you may have done other exhibitions but you know let me tell you that you now have another family here and on that basis can I offer you my bark from my country and ochre from my country, from my father's country, of course, and the branch of eucalypt, which is our belonging. So if you'll accept that from me, and at the same time, and this by chance was amazing because I didn't think I had any red ochre left in my little collection. But <laughs> And to you, Lorraine, a gift of bark, of course, from my father's country, the red ochre of which you connect so well too and of course the branches of gum leaves and in doing this it means that you know now your sister your latinata to to my country and i love saying that because i've been given three skin names and i just feel so proud when i'm able to be somewhere and acknowledge that i belong as well to someone else's country so your latinata to Wurundjeri country. Leaves, of course, are who we are. We're known as the Managum people. We like to share what we've all been given. We've all been given this wonderful gift of, this, of the land. Accepting this gift, which you have done, means that you are welcome to everything from the tops of these amazing trees to the roots of the earth. And it also means that, of course, being family now, being Nakwaran, that you join with us to, to pay your respects and honour the spirits of our ancestors who have nurtured this land, but indeed all of Wurundjeri country for many, many thousands of years. Thank you so much. Lorraine's country, and I'm hoping I'm going to pronounce this properly, is Mangkung Dung, almost, in West, no? Thank you, Mangun Dung, from Western Arnhem Land. I've already mentioned that she's uh, an amazing coordinator at MITS. I just want to also say that whilst we know that a lot of artists work on uh, various mediums and the bark to me really is very central to where we come from and uh, the use of bark. So I just really wanted to stress that, that importance of connection for country. And of course, that she was taught to paint by her late grandfather, Warabinda, and Bari Lofty, Nadja Merit, AO. You know, an AO is not something that you take lightly. I think particularly in his time, it's an amazing effort and I want to pay my respects to him. The uh, red ochre that I just mentioned uh, of course was his way of depicting the love of his country, the rock art uh, the, at the rock and the rock art that then set upon his mission for his work. Over many years the, a lot of his work has been shown at many major collections of his have been shown at many museums and of course one of those is our NGV here at uh, in Melbourne. So Again, there's a connection which is just really wonderful. And I was a trustee some years ago. <laughs> but also, one of the lovely things is that I read that Lorraine Saucers goes home to country to get to find her own bark. And I don't think I've ever heard that anywhere, and I may be wrong, but that tells you how intense and how much respect she has for her culture 
and it would and it's certainly for me one of the great learnings that we need to pass on to emerging artists to say that country is country always will be and that if you can you know keep that connection to country by going home and choosing your own piece of of bark well that's what a continuing legacy is all about Genevieve, as I said, on her own here today and comes from an amazing family of artists and Emily Anangwari, I'm sure some of you would remember and of course she'll always be remembered as a, an amazing artist with such life and, and vibrancy that, and a lady that I was very, very happy to meet on a number of occasions and she, like you Genevieve, was rather shy about you know all her beautiful work and how much she's achieved so I'm sure that you have got you know an amazing family history and I'm sure that we'll see much much more of you in, in years to come. The One of the things that really is so beautiful for me and what a wonderful opportunity for both these young women. From the age of five Genevieve's had this wonderful privilege of being able to sit with family, be encouraged by family, learn the skills of the art and again can I say how important that is. What a wonderful opportunity and we have to stress that because so many of our community didn't have that opportunity. They both have chosen to become artists and I think that in itself just speaks so highly of their family, the environment, that connection to country and of course their, their livelihood of being who they are. That wonderful way of having substantial respect and such a sense of responsibility to honour those who have given them these wonderful skills and talents and for them to continue their legacy on. So I've said enough. Lorraine, can I just thank you? It's, it's been a while since I've been here. I've known Lorraine over the years and I just want to say from my heart that Lorraine has done amazing work for our community for many, many, many years and I want to thank you for continuing to do that and you do it so beautifully, so humbly. You know, this wonderful woman has certainly made a wonderful pathway for, for many of our uh, emerging artists. My language is the Woi Wurrung, Wimenjaka Wurrungi Balak Yemen Kundi Bik, and you are most welcome to the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. Thank you. Yeah, firstly, I would just like to say thank you to Annie Joy for your welcome to country. It's always, I guess, an honour and, and privilege to be welcomed on your country and have your blessing, which is also very, very important. I acknowledge your ancestors, the Wurundjeri people, and thank you for your guidance and your ongoing commitment to sharing your stories and ensuring that it sustains. You've said a lot about these two amazing artists, so I'm just going to not talk about that, I'm just going to talk off the cuff. Yes, congratulations to Genevieve and Lorraine on your outstanding achievements in having this amazing exhibition. I stand here proud today as a 46-year-old Aboriginal woman. I'm a descendant, um, a clan owner of the Awaja peoples in the West Arnhem Land region, which is where our connectedness is from, but also on my mother's side, Gidja and the Yarra people of the East and West Kimberleys. Through my time, I guess, in sports, I was pr very privileged to travel to 55 countries around the world representing Australia, a number of world championships, Olympics, and all the rest of it. One thing I do remember, and this sort of draws me back to, you know, your outstanding achievements, both of you, from you two young ladies, is the ongoing inherent responsibility that we have as Aboriginal people. And I know when I won my Olympic gold medal, I went back to country on Cannon Hill, where I sat with my great uncle, who was known as the great Bill Nagy, and I took the 60 Minutes crew back with me. Charles Woolley said to my great uncle, you must be very proud of Nova being this first Aboriginal person to win an Olympic gold medal. And he didn't understand the significance of it. <coughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> and his son, Jonathan Naji, who I call Bunyi Dad, who still lives on country, who looks after country. I've got so many family members that are rangers, said to, said to old man, Dad, this significance of an Olympic gold medal, do you remember how happy you were when you won your land back? And he could resonate with something so big 
and in 1978 our family groups in the West Arnhem Land region were one of the first Aboriginal traditional owner groups to get their land back. So that sort of resonated with him and I, he passed away in 2005 and I always remember every time I'd go back to country every year I'd take my kids he'd always say to me are you finished doing your humbug? <laughs> So to him, sports was humbug. <laughs> and he'd always remind us about going back to country, going back to country, going back to country. And, you know, my little grandson, little Isaac, when I was in Parliament a couple of years ago, we went back to country and I took a couple of politicians and it gave me such immense pride that my little, you know, five-year-old grandson at that time was taking these two politicians, walking out on the escarpment, stone country, and saying, this is when the, the, the people from over the waters used to come here and we used to give them the tree paying and they'd come talking about a, you know, 600-year-old painting of the Macassans. And, you know, when my kids would just go climb me up on country and they would find skeletal artwork, like these amazing bits of artwork. And, you know, just recently, you know, there was artwork that would found over 100 bits of artwork that stretch back, you know, over 20, 30,000 years. And it's up to us to sustain that. And it's important because we are nothing without our identity. We're nothing about without our culture. Taking, you know, a paintbrush to paper and sharing that stories and sharing their stories with the wider Australian community, with the wider international community is just, it's so important. You know, and there's so much talk about, you know, the, what it would mean for a recognition or a treaty with Aboriginal people. You know, why the Australia, you don't lose 233 years, you gain 40,000 plus years of history. That's what you gain. You don't lose much, you gain a hell of a lot. It makes me so proud. I took my kids back only three, four weeks ago, school holidays, back to country. And when my kids go to boarding school, because I want my kids to walk in those two worlds, you know, you can't sustain country without having a, a pretty damn good education. And I see young junior boy, I know his dream and aspiration is to become a sea ranger, to go back to country. That's also my son's dream. You know, he wants to do marine biology so he can go back to country as a sea ranger. And that makes me so goddamn proud to know that I've got kids you know, for you two young, amazing, inspirational artists to, you know, carry on that knowledge, that wisdom. That's, that's our responsibility. We've got a lot to live up to, which is cool, 40,000 years, but, you know, we can handle that. I think we can. <laughs> but it's important, you know, to keep that generation of knowledge going. So it's a real honour to be here today amongst two amazing artists, Arnie Joy, who, you know, my children look up to, have been out to uh, see uh, at Warrior College, at to many places where she gives such beautiful welcome. So it's always important for us to know that when we go to different places, we always yell out to the ancestors to know we want them to take care of us. It's like when anyone comes up to our country, you know, we want you guys to have a, a safe and pleasant journey. So yeah, without any further ado, I think said what I had to say and it's a real honour. I hope everyone enjoys this exhibition, but also just understand the significance of what these um, pieces of art mean. It's, you know, thousands and thousands of years of, you know, stories being passed down. And I thank you through your graciousness and your beautiful artwork that you've kept our um, culture going. Thank you.